I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 3, and let's focus on verses 27 through 29. Go to the top of Pisgah and look to the west, north, south, and east, and see it with your own eyes. For you will not cross this Jordan, but commission Joshua and encourage and strengthen him, for he will cross over ahead of the people and enable them to inherit this land that you will see. So we stayed in the valley facing Beth Peor. That's Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 27 through 29. It has been said that success is defined by the successor. That is, it's not enough to build a big organization. The true test of ministry success is whether you can build something that would thrive in your absence. Now, every organization dependent on a founder or a leader's charisma has to cope with the eventual absence or the extraction of its charismatic leader. Healthy organizations are built on principles, products, ideals, and ideas that are bigger than any particular leader. And one scenario that is particularly tense is how a leader copes with his or her eventual passing. Does he mentor a young leader, pick an older colleague as a successor, or leave the organization unfit for the future? And this was Moses' test. The Lord had told him that he was going to die soon, and Joshua was going to succeed him. And for a moment, remember how God told Abraham that he would not enter the land, but his offspring would. Abraham trusted the Lord. For him, knowing the future was the same as living it, and so he died in peace. Saul, on the other hand, knew that David was anointed as his successor, and Saul did not delight over God's provision for Israel. He wanted his son Jonathan to be the king, and he even rebuked Jonathan for his acquiescence to David's eventual kingship. So Saul tried to kill David. Herod, at the time of Jesus' birth, tried to present the Messiah from reigning by murdering all of the male babies in Bethlehem. Moses had to decide either to honor the Lord or to give himself over to envy. And the Lord told Moses that Joshua would accomplish Moses' dream. Joshua would lead Israel into Canaan. Furthermore, God also commanded Moses to encourage and to strengthen Joshua. And it's a testimony of Moses' humility that he obeyed the Lord. Standing on top of Mount Pisgah, it was enough for Moses to see the future, a prosperous future without Moses. By the way, it's impossible to view the whole promised land from where Moses stood. I've been there, so I know. The Lord must have enabled Moses to see, as Abraham was enabled, what is impossible for men to see. So Christian leaders must set their hearts on the betterment of the community of believers above their personal agendas to ensure the next generation thrives in the Lord. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Check us out at groundworksministries.com.